what's the thing that where you thrive? What's the thing that, that, that you feel most comfortable in, in, in doing? Uh, you know, can you, can you always grow a good crop of carrots? Can you always grow a good crop of marigolds? Okay. Whatever it is that, that, that you feel comfortable and, and, and confident and affirmed in, grow that. I'm Justin Rhodes. And I'm Rebecca Rhodes. Uh, we grow most of our own food on our homestead and teach and inspire others to do that same thing. You know, when we did the Great American Farm Tour, if you've been following me for a while, we went, if you haven't, we traveled all 50 states in search of the greatest American farm. And we passed a lot of conventional farms, a lot of corn, a lot of wheat, a lot of just straight up potatoes. And it feels a little overwhelming. A lot of feedlots where the hundreds of cows in one area and too small of an area. But then I go to these meetups and many people just like you would come and it would be a breath of fresh air and excitement because it made, it made me feel like maybe we weren't doing so bad, that maybe this movement is bigger than we think. And I think it is, because just, just take a minute and look around and see and count the acres that are in this room where people are really starting to take care of the earth and starting to take care of their own body. You could say we're content creators in the sense that we homestead, but we document that through films and we put that up on YouTube. But we also have a member area where folks can get more instructional type videos. And we have our movie Permaculture Chickens and our movie The Great American Farm Tour. So we produce content to inspire and teach folks to grow their own food. I don't know if any of you are familiar with my work, but on the left is a chick shawl at least his, his idea of it and his modifications for it. And that's a mobile coop for moving your chickens around and he was having a great time with it. But it was, it was inspiring to me and hopefully to others that here was a guy all the way over in, in Hawaii that had built a chick shawl. I'm from North Carolina. The internet and this technology has been able to bring all of us together mm -hmm. and to learn and to move us and advance us further because this vast amount of knowledge out there. And Great American Farm Tour, what inspired that trip? <laughs> Basically, I asked myself what would I do if I wasn't afraid and traveling was at the top of that list and so we sold our farm animals or gave them away and we converted a school bus or we had a school bus converted and we took off and did all 50 states in 10 months. Are you, how do you feel about it afterwards? I'm really glad that we did it and it's mm -hmm. super amazing and it makes it just like makes me almost tear up when I think about what we did and it was really hard and it was way harder than we had anticipated it being but we're really thankful that we got to experience it. Hey, I'm Luke from the My Gardener channel. We have an online store as well as a brick and mortar store where we sell seeds and fertilizer, but we promote organic gardening to the community. So who actually spends more than, let's say, 20 hours a week in their garden? It's too many, that's why I started out Pally Gardening. Who spends 10 minutes or less per week? Anyone? Woo! We have an autopilot gardener. Okay, so I spend less than 10 minutes per week in my garden, and most of that time is spent enjoying it and harvesting, and basically harvesting. So I'm not, spend, uh, I'm not spending time weeding, I'm not spending time watering, and I'm certainly not spending time sweating in the sun because everyone knows I hate the sun. I really homestead because the, the cost of living, especially in the city, is so high that uh, when it comes to eating fresh fruits and vegetables, my wife and I, we have pretty much a 90% plant-based diet. So it's something that if I am going to, you know, if I'm gonna eat the, the healthiest, best fresh tasting food, it's gonna cost a lot, so if I can grow it, I can drastically uh, cut back on my food costs, and that's why I grow my own food. You have to, and I mean must, if you're going to grow high intensity, you have to have good fertility. This means regular, fertili regular fertilizing. The soil is like a bank account. If you're not depositing money, but you're withdrawing money, eventually that bank account is going to run out. And so you need to be giving regular deposits to your bank account so there's something to withdraw. And by withdraw, I mean good, healthy produce. I started selling seeds because people would always ask where I got my seeds. And I noticed that there was a, a disconnect between uh, the, the seed companies and the end consumer. There was a lot of 
question marks and um, quality control issues and just areas of concern that me as a gardener, um, I couldn't overlook. It really grew from what was a small cardboard box with seeds we were saving ourselves from our garden to now we get to source all of our own seeds from different farmers, small family farmers around the country, and we get to help other people uh, make a livelihood doing what they love to do. So it's, it's just a ton of fun and I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it for anything else in the world. My name is Eustace Conway and my story is one that's a bit unusual because even at a young age I just decided to live what I imagined, wanted and dreamed and that was just to move out in the woods and live naturally and so when I was 17 I just walked out in the forest and I've been living my whole life outside so for many 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 decades now I've just had a natural lifestyle. People told me you can't do that or you can't do this Fortunately, I have an unusual personality. I just looked at them, smiled politely, and said, oh, okay, as I went ahead and did what they told me was impossible. When I was young, I just realized that uh, the normal way of living just wasn't getting it for me. There was something I thought more meaningful, and I was right. There is a much more meaningful way of life when you can be more in contact with where your stuff comes from, where your food comes from, your water, like build your own building, live in your own building, and it's a, a rich and deep meaning that comes from like your your psychology, you know, like your feeling. So it's one thing to, to build stuff with your hands, but it's another thing to build confidence and peace within you, which the, the greatest insurance policy there is, is to be able to have confidence to do whatever you need to do to live. And I started just hunting and gathering my food and making my things and if I didn't have something to eat well I went hungry and I learned about that if I didn't have a tool and I needed it I learned how to make it and I learned how to use just a few tools I can literally take uh, the tools that I can carry in my hands and walk along with a few tools an axe a saw a drill a hand axe a fro just a few things and I can make a complete building can make a huge building just with what I can carry in my hands as I walk along. Yeah, I've just done a lot of stuff that most people think is impossible. One time I rode a horse in the night and just gashed my face all up, cut this lip in half, cut a big B in this one, a flap hanging over, my tongue sticking out, and I thought, you know, I'm just going to sew myself up. I can do this. I'm good at sewing. Most people would have given up, but I believe that one thing that's made me successful is just believing that I could. So I put a couple of candles beside a mirror and I figured out how to sew and reverse image. I actually would just, just shut my eyes when I was like doing the stitches and tying them. And I just sewed my whole face back up and healed it up. When I started hunting, I started peeling the, I call it a food package, peeling the skin off of the animals. And at uh, first I wasn't good at it, you know, and then that's a real important point I'd like to let you know, you know, when you start doing some of this stuff, when you're new at something, are you going to be good at it? No. You're going to be bad at it. It's okay to be bad at something. It's, it's through your mistakes that you learn. If you really think about it, about the only way you really learn, if you really want to know something, you need to make a lot of mistakes on the trail to figuring it out. Because every mistake you make gives you an opportunity to learn and understand more about it. We are Off Grid with Doug and Stacy. I'm Doug. And I'm Stacy. And we're at the Homesteaders of America Conference in Virginia 2018. We live off grid in a log cabin in the Midwest. Blah, 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 right? <laughs> and we've been doing this for Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> We've been doing this for a, a little over seven years now, and one of the main reasons that we did this was to know where our food was coming from. And what do you guys do full time? We are growers of our health <laughs> and of our food, and we homestead. Yeah, we homestead full time. She works two days a week in town, um, and we're just trying to make our dreams a reality. One thing I think that people miss when they think about this thing is sell it right yeah. move right 
Like we were living in a quarter million dollar house. Why? Right? So, you, but people like you're there and you get caught up in it and you want to stay there and you want to maintain it and you want to keep it and it's part of your status. I mean, we were, it was all those things. But when we made the decision that we wanted to live a better quality life and slow down a little bit and take more control over our life and our food and everything else, it was easy for us to punt that stuff. We sold every single thing we had. One of the taglines that we have is that we live a pioneer life in the 21st century, which means we do have a few modern conveniences sprinkled in, but we do live like the pioneers did in the 18, 1900s. Um, we also talk about um, growing food, like the color of food matters and how healthy it is for your body, ways to preserve it, stuff like that. And the reason why we do this though is to help people in this growing movement of homesteading um, is to help them learn things because we had to go through a lot of trials and errors uh, to get to where we are. So we're just hoping we can save some folks uh, some errors and that way they can have more success. The human body, just for some of you guys, let's say some of you are sick and you go to the doctor and they're like, you're gonna have to be on this medicine for the rest of your life. The human body is an amazing thing. It wants to heal itself. It really, really does. You know, your, your digestion, your skin, I mean, everything is just rejuvenating by putting good things in it. You can't just keep eating ramen noodles and donuts all the time and think that you're going to get better, you know. You have to put good food in. And, and I always say when you guys are eating and eating your food that you want to make sure every meal you have some type of live food on your plate. because. When you eat, think, am I bringing life to my body? I think the two words that stand out the most will be mentorship and community. Mm -hmm. yeah. So in your community, there are willing and able free mentors who want to share that knowledge of building that building. You can do it. I'm Stacey Lynn Harris, and I have the blog StaceyLynnHarris.com, and I am an author of three cookbooks. Bringing in the freshest, best meat available to man, and even Abraham on his deathbed asked for venison for one of his last meals. I mean, it is incredible, but if you don't prepare it right, and it has to be prepared completely different, really, than beef because it doesn't have a lot of fat. So if you don't prepare it right, it's one of the worst things you'll ever eat. Well, one day I kept talking about writing a cookbook about venison because there wasn't anything that I liked. I wanted pictures, I'm very visual, and I didn't see anything that had pictures that were beautiful and the food that looked like you really wanted to make it. So I said, well, I'm gonna fill that spot. So my husband said, you know what? It's time for you to write that book. And people ask me, well, how, are you, how do you do all of what you do? So the thing that I would say is have your kids with you with everything you do. I have five of mine with me now. Of course, my husband's here um, with me. We take all of them everywhere. My husband takes them all. He has never been hunting without them. I take my girls everywhere I go. I have a, a professional photographer, a professional cleaner. I mean, you know, like the, a, a person that is so organized that runs my life. And, you know, all of them have, they'll, they'll develop their special gifts and talents when you use them. But use them, and, and, and that's not a bad thing to use your children to help you to develop because they're developing skills and they may not do that one day but they're going to put it into what God has planned for them to do. It's been a very gradual process and when it and ours started backwards from what I think most people most people probably start shopping locally like at farmers markets and all but we started with the wild game and then I was like hey if we're eating all this real healthy food then why in the world would we you know not want to eat healthy on the vegetables so we started shopping locally then then we decided to plant a garden so we got seeds and you know learned all of that from the ground up and then then came chickens then came bees and you know and and the rest is just history find something to enjoy every day and if you just look outside and you're growing your vegetables and and yeah there may be weeds uh, you may not have weeds but um <laughs> i have weeds except in the winter in the winter garden it's good um but you know you look out there and you just enjoy the fruit of your labor and look at your children and find joy in that as well Hi, I'm Joel Salatin, and this is the Homesteaders of America Conference 2018 in Warren County Fairgrounds in the beautiful state of Virginia. We farm, uh, I'm co-owner with my family of Polyface Farms down uh, in the Shenandoah Valley of Virginia near Stanton, and we produce uh, 
uh, pastured poultry, salad bar beef, bigger acre pork, uh, pastured eggs, lambs, rabbit, uh, firewood, and anything that we can possibly cobble together to keep the tax man off our back. And if I could say, if, if somebody asked me what's the single number one whatever thing that you see that, that, that irritates you on your farm or somebody else's place, it's mud holes, it's animals in mud holes, it's dirt chicken yards, dirt pig yards, um, dirt. In places where, for example, in urban settings where somebody maybe doesn't have a very big yard, I tell them, don't worry, don't, don't, think, don't worry about the pasture. Don't worry about the, the yard. Just build a stationary chicken coop. But here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna make it so that the chickens can live on a 24 inch deep bedding pack. We throw uh, whole oats or barley or, or uh, rye in there. They eat about, you know, two thirds of it and a third of it filters down into bedding and then it sprouts. And now the chickens get to dig and find fresh sprouts in the winter time. They don't have pasture, but they have fresh sprouts. It's been uh, the most gratifying thing over my lifetime has been to watch this, whatever, you know, gullies and rock pile actually blossom, you know, and soil build and earthworms proliferate and, and, uh, and just uh, go from, from a, a feeling of, of weeds and gullies and bare soil and scarcity, uh, scarcity to be able to go out and know that my, my caress has brought abundance. That is an amazing, you know, uh, spiritually, emotionally satiating feeling. We're only a, um, less than two hours south of here, so if you want to add a day to your trip, just, or stop by on your way home, 24-7, uh, 365, anybody's welcome from anywhere in the world to see anything, anytime, unannounced. That's our commitment to transparency. Take that, government. I think if you only got food from places like that, we probably wouldn't need the government to watch over it, would we? The reason that this conference is so important is because, you know, we live in a time where we have essentially um, abandoned, uh, as a culture, uh, a connection and a link with the most foundational elements of living, you know, growing a plant, uh, um, making applesauce. Seeing how things are made makes you appreciate so much the artisans behind it and people don't know where their clothes come from their food comes from and i think it's very important because that that respect you know of of nature and people and time and how they spend their energy is, is very very important good information lots of good vendors which is important because a lot of you guys are just starting out in your journey you might need to get tools it's a gathering it's a celebration of the forces it's a celebration of the gathering of the minds it's a introduction from teachers to students that are wanting, needing, and craving this kind of information or even just the subtle validation that yeah you're okay to believe that you need to be able to get back to the land. Um, I always say I, I don't I don't know anything I've everything that I know I've learned from someone else so if I surround myself with more people that are like-minded I have a better chance of learning something or or just enhancing what I do to better my own life and that's why these type of, of conferences are just amazing and uh, why I think everyone should try to go to one because you never know what you're gonna pick up or what you're gonna learn. And I really like it here because because it really is, even though you don't know these people, it's like your family. <laughs> you know, you come here, yeah. everyone is talking to one another, everyone is having a good time. We who homestead are often isolated. We tend to feel like we're crazy because normal people don't do it. So it's good to be around a bunch of other crazy folks who are growing our own food so that we don't feel so isolated and it encourages us to keep going. And so a shindig like this is the tribe is where the tribe assembles that is that is promoting and and uh, and encouraging people it's it's the cheerleader tribe for reconnecting with these foundations of life